Good morning. I'm Attorney General Mike DeWine. First, let me make a comment about the verdict. A prosecutor's most important duty is to seek justice. And I believe what we saw today is, in fact, justice. This is not a happy time for anyone. No one can take any pleasure in this. Every rape is a tragedy. This is a tragedy. Before I explain what will happen next in our investigation, I would like briefly to recap how and why my office got involved in this investigation and in this prosecution. First, on August 16, 2012, the Steubenville Police Department asked the Attorney General's Bureau of Criminal Investigation, BCI, to assist in processing the scene of a rape that occurred at a home in Wintersville, Ohio. Our agent immediately responded and processed the scene. On August 17, 2012, Steubenville Police Department contacted BCI again and asked for our assistance in analyzing cell phones collected from the main suspects in the rape investigation and to process other forensic evidence. Next, on August 24, 2012, Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Jane Hanlon filed three charges against a juvenile, rape, kidnapping, and dissemination of nudity-oriented materials of a juvenile. On that same day, Prosecutor Hanlon also filed charges of rape and kidnapping against a second juvenile. Next, on August 27, 2012, Prosecutor Hanlon moved the court to bind the juveniles over to be treated as adults. On that same day, Prosecutor Hanlon formally requested assistance from the Ohio Attorney General's Office in the prosecution of the two juveniles. Thereafter, the Common Pleas Court appointed my office as prosecutors in this matter. I then directed attorneys Marianne Hemmert and Brian Deckert in our special prosecution section to handle this case. On October 12, 2012, the Juvenile Court of Jefferson County held a probable cause hearing for the two juveniles. At that time, the court determined that the two were and are amenable to rehabilitation in the juvenile court system and therefore denied the motion to try them as adults. As this case evolved, I assembled a team of 15 special agents from BCI to determine if any other crimes were committed. I also assigned former Greene County prosecuting attorney and current senior advisor and assistant attorney general William Skink to that team. As part of our investigation, BCI agents identified 43 individuals who attended at least one of the two parties. Investigators interviewed 27 of these individuals, while 16 refused to cooperate, giving various reasons. Investigators also interviewed the owners of the residence where one of the two parties occurred. Our investigators further interviewed the principal, superintendent, and 27 football coaches from Steubenville High School. To date, our investigators have completed a total of 56 interviews. Additionally, cybercrime specialists at BCI analyzed 13 separate phones. From these phones, investigators reviewed and analyzed 396,270 text messages, 308,586 photos, pictures, 940 video clips, 3,188 
phone calls and 16,422 contacts listed in phones. Let me turn now to where we go from here. As I've indicated, we've been involved in an extensive investigation trying to determine, trying to learn if any other individuals committed any crimes. While we have interviewed almost 60 individuals, 16 people refused to talk to our investigators. I have reached the conclusion that this investigation must, cannot be completed. This investigation simply cannot be completed. That we cannot bring finality to this matter without the convening of a grand jury. Therefore, I am asking the Jefferson County Common Pleas Court to convene a grand jury to meet on or about April 15th. My prosecutors will present evidence to this grand jury for the grand jury to determine if other crimes have been committed. I anticipate numerous witnesses will be called. The grand jury, quite candidly, could meet for a number of days. Now, I should point out that the convening of a grand jury, of course, does not necessarily mean that indictments will be returned or that charges will be filed. However, indictments could be returned and charges could be filed. It has been my experience, going back to my experience as a county prosecuting attorney, that a grand jury is an investigative tool that is uniquely suited to ensure fairness and to complete this investigation. This community needs assurance that no stone has been left unturned in our search for the truth. Now, I'd like to take a moment to talk, not uh, as the Attorney General of this state, but rather as a parent, parent of eight, and now grandparent of 19. So as a parent and a grandparent, my heart goes out to the victim and her family. This has been an unbelievably difficult time for her and for her family. Any rape is a tragedy. Any rape is very difficult, horrible for the victim. I think it's even more difficult when the victim is continually re-victimized in the social media. And that is what has happened here. Let me talk about the community. This community has also suffered and been through a great deal. This is a good community. These are good people who live in this community. I feel for the community. I feel for what they've been through. And I know that it desperately needs to be able to put this matter behind it and to begin to move forward. Everything that has happened in Steubenville has been very difficult and very, very sad and very tragic. But let me be clear. This is not just a Steubenville problem. This is a nationwide problem. This is a societal problem. 
What happened here is shocking. It's appalling. Well, quite frankly, what's even more shocking and appalling is that crimes of sexual assault are occurring every Friday night, every Saturday night across this country in big and small communities. We need to say enough is enough. This has to stop. This is wrong. This is immoral. We shouldn't tolerate it anymore as a people and as a country. Among some people, there seems to be an unbelievable casualness about rape and about sex. It's a cavalier attitude, a belief that somehow there isn't anything wrong with any of this. Rape is not a recreational activity. We as a society have an obligation to do more to educate our young people about rape. They need to know it is a horrible crime of violence. And it's simply, simply not okay.